Shalom, all praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Bashem, Arakak, Wadash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, all well. And Shalom to the whole four elect. This is Bayal of the GMS London camp, and it's a biblical commentary on the book of Luke, the ninth chapter. And it reads Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over the, all devils and to cure diseases. All right, showing you that Yahweh Bashem say Salakia Yahweh Shai has power and authority over all the you know demons, right? Because he has power on the left hand and power on the right side, all right, right hand. Remember the book of James where he speaks upon faith. He he spoke about um, you believe in God, you know you believe in the Most High. That's good, all right. But so does the devil, and he trembles, all right. So they they believe in the heavenly Father as well, right? But they, and they tremble because they're subject unto Him, right? So Yahweh Shai dispensed that power unto His men, and He sent them to preach the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of Yahweh, to heal the, and to heal to to sick. And He said unto them, Take nothing for your journey, neither staffs nor scrip, neither bread, neither money, neither have two coats apiece. And whatsoever house ye enter into, there abide and thence depart. And whosoever will not receive you, when you go out of the sit that city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against it. All right. So when you basically, when you go and preach this word, if if a city don't or a town or city don't accept you, basically shake the shake the dust of your feet, basically, as to say like, look, this it's done. All right. And I'll be a testimony against it, right? And they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Now Herod the Tetrarch heard of all that was done by him, and he was perplexed because that it was said of him that John was risen from the dead, and of some that Elias had appeared, and of others that one of the old prophets was risen again. And Herod said, um, John have I beheaded? But who is this of whom I hear such things? And he desired to see him. Okay. And the apostles, when they were returned, told him all that they had done. And he took them and went aside privately into a desert place belonging to the city called Bethsaida. All right. So he went away privately. Verse 11. And the people, when they knew it, followed him and he received them and spake unto them of the kingdom of of Yahweh and healed them that had need of healing. All right, so the Lord didn't kick up no fuss that they discovered him when he went aside privately. He dealt with them. All right, he moved in the spirit as to say, okay, they found me. Let me um, be a servant unto them and, and and minister unto them and basically give them what they need, heal them as they need their healing, and and do my thing. Verse twelve and. When the day began to wear away, and came the tw then came the twelve, and said unto him, Send the multitude away, that they may go into the towns and country round about, and lodge and get victuals. For we are here in a desert place, all right? They're in a place of a desert, so there'll be no way for them to get their food or to eat or anything. Verse 13, But he said unto them, Give ye them to eat. And they said, we have no more but five loaves and two fishes, except we should go and buy meat for all this people. Verse 14, for they were about 5,000 men. And he said to his disciples, Give, make them sit down by fifties in a company. All right. So the Lord told them to make them sit down in comp companies of fifties. And it made me think of, you know, the fact that the Lord gave word unto his disciples to do this and basically go on and do the acts that I'm going to read upon he told them they, they did basically in his name that made me think about when the, the word went forth and made the world, world sorry, and how that Yahweh Shai would have basically had the angels that were there with him, alright, the elect alright, the Alahayim which basically also built the earth and was under the orders of Yahweh Shai from the beginning alright, but it also made me think of Elijah we had the 50 um, sets of, of men, basically, that came being sent from uh, uh, um, Isaiah, right? The king of um, Samaria at the time sent the 50s. 
And basically, the first two fifties got rain, got you know killed by, consumed by the fire from heaven. But in the third set, the Lord told Elijah to go and follow after them because they came before his knees, before his feet, basically, and basically, you know, made supplication unto him and, and you know asked of mercy. And he went down and followed them. All right. So anyway, it goes on to say. Um, goes on to say um um verse 14 uh verse 15 sorry and they did so and made them all sit down then he took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven he blessed them and break them and gave to the disciples to set before the multitude, all right. So the base he through the spirit of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai Basham Arukakudash, he prayed for this to happen. Verse seventeen, and they did eat and were all filled, and there was taken up of fragments that remained to them twelve baskets, all right. And this reminds me of the scripture Proverbs of Faith chapter, where it basically speaks of, give me not, you know, too little where I take your name in vain, and give me not too much, whereby um. Or too little where, I, uh, you know, I, you know, I, I have to steal and bring shame upon your name, and too much that I forget your name. All right, and in saying that, um, you know, the Lord will make a way, man. When you do what you need to do, the Lord will make a way and will take care of you, even when it looks like there's no way for you to be taken care of. All right, and as it says in the Book of Psalms, there's pleasures evermore on the Lord's right hand side. All right, and this was shown that through the little there was. There was there was more there was nothing, all right. But a multitude of five thousand were fed, and then there was even twelve baskets of leftover food. So there was even leftover. If anyone wanted any more, it was there for them, all right. So that shows you the Lord has got an abundance of things stored away for us, man. All right. Verse eighteen, and it came to pass as he was alone praying, his disciples were with him. And he asked them, saying, Whom say the people that I am? And he aunt and they, they answered and said, John the Baptist, but some say Elias, and others say that one of the old prophets is risen again. He said unto them, But whom say ye ye that I am? Peter answered and said, The anointed of the Most High. And he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing. Saying, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders of chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. All right. So the Lord, they they knew who the Lord was through the Spirit. All right. Peter, Peter said it. But then guess what? He went on to say, look, I'm going to suffer all these things at the hands of the elders and the chief priests. All right. And he told them to basically, you know, uh, keep... Let me read that, verse 23. And he said unto them, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. All right? And that's really a prophecy because he's going to take up his cross. And they're going to have to walk in that same stead as Yahweh Shai, taking up their cross and being servants unto him. All right? So it says, um, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. All right? For what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself and be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his father's and of the holy angels. All right. Um, all right. Reading on says, but I tell you of a truth. There be some standing there that shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of the hour. All right. And that's basically talking about in this this, this generation that we're in now. All right. There's some men that's gonna be able, that's gonna be standing when the kingdom comes, all right. They're gonna be beamed up and translated, all right, at the the sound of the seventh trump, the last trump basically, and be trying, you know, turned uh blessed to see the Lord, all right. And it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James um, and went up to the mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, right? And that even shows you the fact that Yahweh was praying shows you how powerful prayer is, all right? And 
we're going to go on to see what the power of this prayer did. All right. So it says, um, and as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and as his raiment so he transfigured, all right, and his raiment was white and glistening, and he got, you know, the that glow, that heavenly glow. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem, all right. So these two great men that are held in high esteem, Moses, the lawgiver, and Elijah, one of the greatest prophets ever, all right, um, you know, who was re reincarnated as John the Baptist, who who was the greatest um, prophet uh, to walk, basically. Those two were 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 glory, you know. Um, in their glory, basically spoke of Yahweh Shai, alright, being given up as a ransom, dying, and what he stood to accomplish at Jerusalem. Because remember, in the Book of Revelation, the fifth chapter, all them in the heavens glory. All right, that Yahweh Shai had accomplished such a thing, so that shows you how great Yahweh Shai is. The fact that Moses, the lawgiver, and Elijah, a great prophet, all right, basically, you know, would speak of what what acts he was gonna do. They weren't speaking of nothing that they did. They were speaking of what Yahweh Shai stood to do. But Peter and they that were with him were very were were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass as they departed from him, Peter said unto Yahushai, Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. Not knowing what he said, all right? So he basically said that, but he didn't understand what he was saying. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared, um, as they, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, "This is my beloved son. Hear him." All right. So basically, the heavenly father, the voice that came out, all right, of that cloud, Yah, the the Most High Yahweh, basically said, "Look, Yahweh shared my son. Hear him." All right, don't worry about Moses and Elias, Elijah. Worry about Yahweh Shai. He's the one. All right, and that that was basically the 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 the, the solidification of what um what was done beforehand. All right, and the fact that the heavenly Father said that. Verse thirty six. And when the voice was passed, Yahweh Shai was found alone, and he kept it close and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen, and it came to pass that. On the next day, when they were come come down from the hill, much people met him, and behold, a man of the of the company cried out, saying, "Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is my only son, only child." And lo, a spirit taketh him, and he suddenly crieth out, and it teareth him, that he foameth again, and bruising him hardly, departed from him. And I besought thy disciples to cast him out, and they could not. And Yahushua answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. And as he was yet um, a coming, the devil threw him down and tear him. And Yahushua rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. And they were all amazed at the mighty power of Yahweh. But while they wondered, every one, at all things which Yahweh Shai did, he said unto his disciples, all right? So basically, that the, um, Yahweh Shai cast off that demon that the disciples didn't have the power to do. But right before it happened, the, you know, the demon, that devil basically tried to, the unclean spirit, basically, you know, tried to, you know, do his best in his last little hurrah before um, the demon was cast out of him, all right? But the Lord just he didn't he didn't fly and kick him, he didn't uppercut him, spin him back kick, or 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 rear naked choke him, choke him through the spirit. He rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child. Alright? So verse 44, let these sayings sink down into your ears, for the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. Alright? Now the Lord would be <laughs> Lord really trying to make them get, alright, to let them know it's said beforehand. All right, and really this was saying that they would understand in reflection. But they understood not this saying, and it was hid from them. 
that they perceived it not and they feared to ask him of that saying so it's still in their mind because they feared to ask him of that saying but they but at that time they didn't perceive what was being said then there arose a reason among them that they of who of them uh which of them should be the greatest and yahweh perceiving the thought of the heart took a child and set him by him and said unto them whosoever shall receive this child in my name receiveth me and whosoever shall receive me receiveth him that sent me for he he that is at least among you all the same shall be great all right so the lord said that like whoever's gonna be the, the you know um um basically showing an act of humility and john the and John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him, because he followeth not um, with us. And Yahushua said unto him, Forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. All right? So he basically said, Look, man, don't forbid him, because he that, he's basically working alongside us. All right? Verse 51. And it came to pass when the time was come. That he should receive, be received up. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. All right, and he sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was set as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when the disciples James and John saw this, they said, "Lord Yahweh, oh, sorry, Lord Yahusha, wilt thou be?" Um, would thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did, all right? But he turned and rebuked them and said, you know not what manner of spirit you are of, all right? And that's why I rebuked them, because he's rebuking that spirit off of them. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village, all right? So the Lord, his whole... Uh, ministry was about saving that which was lost all right joining it back on to the heavenly father all right he wasn't there to take out the kingdom at that time and he and he said that when he spoke about he could p call down 12 legions i believe to to basically fight all right but he didn't do that because that wasn't what he was meant to do at that time he was meant to offer himself up as, as a ransom and that's why moses and Elijah was speaking with him about it because it was a great thing, right? They weren't speaking about him, you know, calling fire down from the heavens. They were talking about him joining the nation of Israel back on to, it was a, it was a, it was a great time. It was a momentous time, right? The joining of Israel back onto the heavenly father through Yahweh Shai. So it says, and it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Yahweh said unto him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man have not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Yahweh said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go down and preach the kingdom of Yahweh. All right, so he, he showed them that there was an express need to, to, to preach the kingdom. All right. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Yahusha said unto them, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of Yahweh. All right, so when you work in this work, you ain't meant to work in it and then take your hands to the plow, go and do your worldly affairs and come back and keep doing the work. No, you if you do that, you're not fit for the kingdom, is what the Lord is saying, all right? So you basically have to keep doing it. You have to maintain that work, all right? And um, in that being said, oh, there was one point, man, but the Spirit might not want me to say it. Um, yeah, that's it. And that, yeah, the Spirit don't want me to say it, man. So with that, I pray you're edified, so I say shalom.